Hey, what's up? Darnell Mason for MMA Hawaii right now, kicking it in the hotel room style with Travis Hopper Brown. Uh, Travis Brown, it's been you know, a couple hours coming off your uh, biggest victory uh, in the UFC to date. Yeah. Uh, I know you ha you've had a little time to let it marinate. How does it feel right now? Oh, man, you know, uh, we've been envisioning this for a long time now. And, uh, you know, this has always been something that I've been able to achieve. Um, the last couple of years, you know, I, I, uh, I really dedicated my life to it, you know, and made a lot of sacrifices. And I don't think people understand what, what it takes to succeed in this kind of an industry, you know, um, and what I've done to get here, you know, and, you know, it is what it is. And, I, and I'm not, you know, I'm not asking for a pat on the back or anything like that, because this is my chosen profession, but, um, you know, more or less, I'm just trying to have people understand that, you know, how hard, you know, I've worked for something like this and, and what you have to do to really, to really succeed. You know, it's not a walk in the park and this isn't something that you're born with, you know. At least I wasn't. I was, I was born a lover, not a fighter. And I tell people that and they laugh, and, but I'm serious because, you know, I'm a, I'm a nice guy and, and a big teddy bear, but... You know, I'm, I I do have that switch. You know what I mean? I've, I've come to terms with it, I guess. And uh, speaking of hard work, because it, you know I've, I've been in and out of Albuquerque. I've, I've missed you the last few times I've been in Albuquerque. But in those of you who follow you on Instagram, Twitter, and your Facebook, they see the hard work. Can you kind of talk about in you know Thanksgiving and Christmas having to put in that hard work, being away from the uh, family because. You have to, I mean, you were, I don't know, I forgot the name of that, uh, was it Elevation Fitness, where Elevate, you were, uh, yeah. Elevate, yeah, you were like, doing a darn thing, it's, yeah. when I was out there, I was like, man, I hope he's getting hooked up, because they're yeah. kind of pricey for uh, workouts over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, all this, all these bonuses and stuff like that, and, you know, the money I'm making and everything, it goes back into uh, my body and building it up and becoming what you guys see now, you know, if you look at me two years ago against Rob Brown and then you look at me now, it's two different bodies, you know. Yeah. But it's taken me that long to, to do it right, you know what I mean? And, and um, a lot of hard work, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, man. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, places are no joke, you know, in these, these places I'm training at, so it's good. Yeah, talk to us about the uh, walkout uh, you had you know, the Hawaii Twitterverse just going crazy because you, you had the haka with the brother is. Like, yeah. kind of, you know, talk to maybe people who might not understand the significance of the haka. Go ahead yeah, and talk so, about that. so the haka is actually a Maori thing. And, uh, you know, but it's also recognized as a symbol of, you know, of uh, war chant. It's a war chant. And, and I think Polynesian people, not just Hawaiians, you know, Polynesian people in general, they, they get that and they see that. And, um, you know, after, uh, you know, Dana, we, we were sitting there at the press conference and you told me that people were charging flights and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and, and there's such a big, uh, you know, like a, that kind of a following, you know what I mean? Coming to watch me fight, or not even only to watch me fight, we had Superstars fight too, but I was a part of the reason. and. You know, I was supposed to come out to a, to a different song, but that night I called up Dana and I was like, hey, you know, just, I want to change my song. I want to do something for the people of Hawaii and, and Polynesian people everywhere, you know, and, and really connect with them, especially on this stage and, and, you know, the beginning of my career right now, you know, and and so uh, he's like, hey, he said he loved it and and uh, we came up with that, you know, and, and and I would love to come out to like what BJ came out to. I just don't, you know, I don't want to take anything away from him right. and, and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, we were just, we we're pondering, sitting, sitting right here in this hotel room trying to figure it out. And I was like, you know, something that connects with the Polynesian, with not just Hawaiians, you know, and with Polynesian people everywhere is the Hakka. And so we came out to the Hakka and then it rolled right into uh, Hawaiian Superman and, and, um, you know, old is man. You can't you can't go wrong. You know, and that's that was kind of more of that that kind of that tribute to the Hawaiian people where I come from. You know, so um, yeah, we just made it my own kind of a thing. You know, uh, definitely. I 
definitely hope uh, you know the EA Sports uh, UFC game that they get licensed songs, and I, I really hope that's in there because I was like, it, you know, just sitting back there, media row, you know, watching the different Twitter and meet social media accounts, and you're just when you're walking out, when you're walking out, just watching, you know, just people, Hawaiians, poly people from all over the world, they just went crazy, and then. Uh, before we get to the end of the fight, let's again talk about uh, let's talk about the fight. How did uh, Josh Barnett build in the clinch, or excuse me, who did you work with, like in the clinch to prepare for that? Man, we have some beasts at uh, Jackson's because I got in there. He did everything that we thought he was going to try to do, um, and his strength and his skill and his speed. We're, we're no match to the guys that I go against on a daily basis, you know. And I don't mean any disrespect to Josh because I respect all the guys that I fight, and I have a and, and I feel, and I'm honored to fight them and and you know that. But it, it just shows such a tribute to my training partners and my coaches that you know we have the right thing going on at Jackson's. And to be honest with you, I build these guys up in my head as monsters and going in that cage. And and the reason I do that is because it pushes me in training. You know what I mean? To to really like just give it everything that I have when I'm in, in Albuquerque. And that's the same reason why I missed Thanksgiving and Halloween and Christmas with my kids. You know, I could have gone back and seen them and stuff like that. Yeah, I could have. But the thing is though, is I use that as motivation to come out and to bust my ass and you know, freaking go hard, you know? And um, man, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, going against them, it was everything we thought it was gonna be. And honestly, I was not worried, concerned at all, one bit during that entire fight because of my training partners and my coaches. We were ready for it. So, in, did, um, in, uh you connected with the knee and then those elbows. Did you know he was out or were you just? Yeah, yeah, the knee hit and he dropped, you know, to his knees to try to do a double and that's not like Josh. So I knew he was hurt right away and I felt that knee land flush. Um, and then uh, the elbows were going and, you know, my job is to finish the fight and the jo referee's job is to pull me off you know so as soon as he stepped in I stopped but I could tell he was hurt and he was out for sure so uh, how long of a uh, layoff do you want to have I know you missed the holidays and <clears throat> you want to head back to head back to the home and yeah. you know do definitely do it right like like uh, are you feeling healthy after this or like yeah what? yeah just my elbow hurts a little bit uh, same way I hurt when I fought Gonzaga um, you know from those elbows but you know, I'll be ready to go. Last time it took almost a month for me to completely heal up so I could go 100% again. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. The elbow's sore, you know, and it takes a couple of days, you know, just to feel how it goes. But I'll be back soon. You know what I mean? And, when, you know, if they ask me to fight, I'll fight. So I'm ready. I'm a fighter. So if uh, a cane's on the shelf uh, for a little bit, or if he, you know, if they uh, throw up an interim belt, uh, most likely it'd be you and uh, Fabricio Verdun. Ideally, where would you like to uh, fight him? Oh, wherever and whenever, you know. And same thing with with uh, with Verdun, man. I have so much respect for him, and he's a he's a competitor at heart. So, you know, I'd love to compete against them and go out there and fight and and put on a show. Um, you know, they're not going to put up an interim belt because the champ won't even be, be out like a full year. So it'll just be like a number one contender fight, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm ready for it, and it'll be it'll be a great fight, you know. It, it really, yeah, I'm ready for it, and and um, you know, hopefully later this year I'll go on to fight for the belt. Can you talk about uh, like just um, you know just kind of sitting back, you know, interviewing you, watching you, I guess, grow again yeah, as a man, as a fighter over the uh, past few years? It seems like your confidence is like just going up is it because of training because of your experience definitely yeah and it's it's about self-belief too you know like uh, i said in the press conference you know i've been training a complete total amount of five years 
I mean, we fight him for four and a half. You know what I mean? And man, I, you know, there's still there was still doubt even going into Gonzaga. You know, a little bit of doubt of like, man, these guys have been around since before I even thought about fighting. They were fighting and doing really well. So you know, there's a little bit of self doubt, but now. You know what I mean? Going up against Gonzaga, a veteran. Going up against uh, Alistair, another veteran. And, and now Barnett, another veteran. And just to see myself just, you know, go through those guys and, and, and how well I'm doing against them, it really, you know, I, I believe in myself now. And that's, a, that's what I was telling people. It's scary is I have not reached my potential. Nowhere close. You know, I still have holes in my game. And, you know what I mean? It's... We're working on them all the time to make them my strengths, you know, and that's what we're, that's what we're working for. So the mentals are definitely a big part of the game. Are you one of the fighters who's seen a uh, sports psychologist? Have you brought that into uh, your training plan yet? Yeah, I have a friend named Mark Stevens in Albuquerque. He actually just moved to tech Texas. So, um, you know, he, he was helping me visualize a lot of things and, and just see, you know, like, you know, see things a little bit differently. And, and um yeah, I, I like I like doing that. Definitely, you have to train yourself mentally as well as physically. Uh, like, can you go ahead and shout out getting like, your team and sponsors? Who's getting been helping you out? Uh, you know, see around the hotel or your hotel or you got Muscle Farm and mm -hmm. you represent big. Like, who's been helping you out? Like, who's yeah, sponsorship out? wise, uh, Muscle Farm. They've been there since I fought Chet Congo, and you know. Through thick and thin, those guys have been been there for me. Um, Safe Auto, same thing. You know, they've been there with me for a long time. Triumph United, you know, again, long time. Uh, you know, we have some good um, some good sponsors now, like One Law, um, Auto Shopper, and stuff like that. One Law's the he's a you know they're really good guys. They're injury lawyers and stuff, and they you know they've been in in the game for a little bit, but. Um, really solid guys there but um yeah like training partners wise uh cody east um back in albuquerque tyler east his brother they really you know helped me get my confidence up uh one of my good friends uh andre Lofsky, he he's there and helps me and you know just you know he's a he's a good friend of mine and uh this last one we had vitaly menikoff the bellator heavyweight champion and man he you know, he just, he's a beast, man. He's really good. Uh, Anthony Hamilton was another one that we had out. Um, the two new coaches that I had was uh, uh, Neil Melanson. He's a grappler here in Vegas. He just moved into San Diego now. But, man, he, he's so, such a beast, man. And um, he was one of my main rolling partners for this, like, to get me... Uh, uh, feeling confident on the ground, and that's what I, he was the reason why I knew Josh. Bar Josh, you're gonna try. You're gonna, if you can get me down, you're gonna have to deal with me on the ground too. Like I know everybody wants to say, oh yeah, you're just you know you're saying that whatever, and you you know you're that's what you're supposed to say. But no, I'm being serious. You know I don't I don't talk out of my ass. You know what I mean? So. You don't have to deal with me on the ground because of that guy and because of Ricky Lundell. Those are the two two new coaches that we that we brought in and Ricky man, he, he comes up with these things and and he's so such a genius in that, you know, he's he's really got the understanding of grappling and the difference between lighter weights and heavyweights and what we wanna do and how we wanna achieve it, you know. And um, you know, having those two guys, um, in my corner and as my coaches and stuff, there, it was so much confidence there. So. Then a few days, uh, you know, a few days after this interview will uh, air, uh, UFC will be going to Singapore, at least three Hawaiians on the card. Uh, what do you think of, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, give your uh, opinions on, uh, I guess, Hawaii fighters' future in the uh, UFC? Man, you know, we're, uh, we're people that, that we don't take no for, for an answer, you know. We fight tooth and nail for everything. And, you know, if you want it that bad, you'll make the, the proper sacrifices to be there. And, um, 
you know, I'm a, I'm a testament to that, and so are those guys, you know, and, and we just need to keep showing that, you know what I mean, it's, it's so weird seeing, like, and I said, I, I mentioned this earlier, but it's, you know, it might be, you know, people are always kind of talking a little too big, but, man, this generation now is just so, so looking for handouts, you know what I mean, and it's sad, people are just sitting there, I want, I want, not like, oh, I'll earn it, you know what I mean, like, the hell have you done to deserve your place you know and um i really I, you know and i was even like that too you know what i mean like oh why isn't this happening for me why isn't this happening for me instead of going out there and making it happen you know and putting in the work and sacrifice and you know that's why this fight i dedicated to all the blue collar workers you know hawaii is not a white collar state we're blue collar workers you know we're a blue collar state and that's that's what that's what this country and that's what that island and that's what our people and that's what this nation was built on you know and that's how it's ran is by blue collar workers you know what i mean without us this you know the rich people don't they don't have a leg to stand on you know and, and um but we still have to do our part and we have to do it proud and, and hold our head high you know and and go out there and, and do everything that we need to do you know and break our backs daily and stuff so um you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, and those boys in, that are going to fight in Singapore, they see that, you know, and if I can help them at all, man, I'd love to, you know, and just have them get into that mindset, you know, because once you get into that mindset, it'll all change, and you'll see why somebody does a certain thing, and, you know, I'm reading a book called Relentless, and, and it's, uh, it's pretty intense because it talks about, you know, that average people will not understand my mindset and what I have to do in order to be great, to be a, to be a cleaner, it says, you know, and, and there's good, great, and then there's a cleaner, you know, there's relentless, and uh, that's me, I want to be relentless, and I can't expect other people to understand, I just have to, it is what it is, you know, I just got to go out there and do it, but, um, yeah, it's, so it goes, but but uh, the other the other thing I want to say is that for my coach Mike Valley, he's been a very important part um, of my training. You know, he helped me my striking and all that. But uh, not only that, man, he's he's a really good guy. And, you know, there's nothing more that makes me um, more proud, you know, than, or more happy than to see how proud he is of me training you know what I mean and fighting and coming out on top and doing as well as, as well as I do man he he deserves it because he's a really good coach you know and and, and you know he, he's the guy that was there with me helping me do my strength conditioning workouts and me not really knowing what I was doing but he would push me hard you know and and he cares he really cares you know and he's a good he's a good guy and of course we have you know Mike Jackson or coach Greg, Jack, Greg Jackson and Mike Winkle John too but those other three guys, man, without those three guys, I wouldn't be getting what I needed out of Jackson and Winkle John. Hey, thank you very much yeah. for your time, Travis. Uh, I know we both got to get into traffic. Looking forward to seeing you in the Octagon and even more uh, seeing you on the island. So Sounds please great. let us know when you're coming. Yeah, and we'll we have there. a, you know, definitely have a big crowd welcome back to the Yeah, island. I'll be back there. I'm going to go pig hunting a little bit and figure yeah. it out. So my sister's having some problems so, with some pigs. So. Okay. Turn up our yards. So I'll be back there. You hear the end for Travis is darn amazing. In May Hawaii, always real people with fighters, people pimp. Thanks, man. Thank you, bro. All right. I'll see you.